process of digestion. So the first process, once when the food, what you are eating, enters into the mouth, that is the place where the first digestion is initiated. How? Mastication process. What is meant by mastication? The process of chewing of food with the help of your how you are chewing the food? Saliva. Teeth. So you are chewing the food. The solid food particles is now made into a semi-solid bolus. So this mastication converts the solid substance into a semi-solid particle which you call a bolus. So once when the food enters into the mouth, the teeth is involved in it functioning. It is chewing the food. It is converting the solid substance into a semi-solid form. From here, you will term it as bolus. Okay. Once when it crosses the mouth, when it is going to the pharynx, you will not tell it as a food. You will term it as a bolus. Because it has become into a semi-solid substance. So for this process, only the teeth will not do its function over here. You need the help of saliva. So saliva plays a major role in this mastication process. So for the secretion of saliva, this saliva is secreted in the salivary glands. And how many salivary glands we are having? We have three salivary glands. One is parotid gland, submandibular gland, and sublingual gland. So we have three salivary glands. One is parotid, submandibular, and sublingual gland. Where is these locations of the salivary gland? Consider this as your ears. Okay. And this is your tongue. Okay. So below the ear in close proximation, you have the parotid gland. Then you have the, at the bottom of the tongue, sublingual. Then you have submandibular gland. So all these glands will give its secretions into the mouth. What are the ducts involved in these secretions? Duct of water, duct of Bartholini. So all these ducts will give its secretions from the glands into the mouth. Okay. And this saliva, it is having some differentiation. That is, it, it may be of serous type or mucus type. What is this serous and mucus type? This mucus type, it is very rich with the digestive enzymes. They are called as salivary enzymes. Okay. And in the serous type, the water content will be more. So this will be determined based upon the type of food which we are eating. Okay. And the most important peculiar feature among the salivary juice is it, in the beginning of the saliva, you will have it to be hypotonic in nature. So salivary gland contains arsenide. As like alveolar structure, we will have the arsenide over here. So these are the arsenide cells which is going to secrete the I'm just drawing a single unit of arsenide. Okay. So as like this, the salivary glands, you have numerous arsenides. Okay. So all these arsenides through the arsenide duct, everything will be connected. Then the major salivary duct. And finally, this major salivary duct is going to drain them into your mouth. 
Okay, so like this, you have a bunch of Athena cells. Okay, clear as like how you have seen like the respiratory bronchioles. All the single alveoli, it is connected together. Then finally you have the large respiratory bronchioles. So which is the one going to involve in inspiration and expiration as a passageway. In the same way, like a bunch of grains. The salivary arrangement is also there in the asina cells in the salivary gland. Okay, so single asinae is what it is looking like over here. So initially in the beginning, the asina cells gives its secretions of saliva. It will be isotonic in nature. What is meant by isotonic? It has the same concentration of solute similar to that of plasma. Okay. In, from the asina cells, whatever saliva you are getting, it is isotonic in nature. And this saliva, whatever has been secreted over here, should travel to the entire ducts of the salivary gland. And then it has to reach the major duct of the salivary gland. During this period, there will be exchange of electrolytes and it makes the salivary secretion to be hypotonic. Okay, clear? From the asina cells, whatever saliva you are getting is isotonic. But in the meantime, during the travel from the asina cells into the major duct, it becomes hypotonic. So finally, the saliva, what we are getting for the digestive purposes, hypotonic in nature. It is not secreted in the hypotonic form. It is secreted as isotonic form and it is going to do its function as a hypotonic form. Okay, clear? And now, we will see the composition of saliva. Saliva is not just a juice which is going to involve in mastication. During mastication also, a small amount of digestion is going to happen. So that is the concept that makes us to determine the composition of saliva. Okay, so saliva, it is first classified into water substances and solid substances. You have 99.9 percentage of water and only 0.5 percentage of solid. 99.5. Okay, clear. So this solid is going to contain all those enzymes. You will term these solids as organic substances, inorganic solid, and some cellular elements. Okay. So this organic substances is the one which is going to contain the digestive enzyme. First one is hyaline. This is the enzyme which you also called as alpha salivary amylase. So as the name alpha salivary amylase, so which kind of substance it is going to digest? Carbohydrates. So the first digestion of carbohydrate is beginning in the mouth itself. Okay. So carbohydrate digestion is initiated. The first the set of digestion of carbohydrates is initiated in the mouth itself because the salivary, alpha salivary amylase, it is present in the saliva. Okay. And next, you have another enzyme called as lingual lipase. So as the name, what it is going to digest? Lipids. Okay. So this is also the place where the beginning of lipid digestion. Okay. And then next you have other enzymes as like the 
other things lysosome lysozymes mucin which contains the mucus substances and another thing is calicrinin which are all involved in accessory functions lactoferrin it is going to digest the milk related dairy product and then prolin some amino acid and you also have nerve growth factor and finally you have the immunoglobulin iga okay so iga is present in the saliva so these are the solid components organic solid components which is present in the saliva and the main enzymes which are involved in the digestion in the mouth itself <coughs> it is because of the presence of alpha salivary amylase and lingual lipase so this is not the only place where the carbohydrate and fat is going to get digested this is the place where the beginning of fat and carbohydrate digestion is happening okay clear and coming to the inorganic substances it includes all the electrolytes sodium potassium magnesium calcium chlorine bicarbonates all those things and cellular components it contains only the desquam makers bacterial cell okay clear yeah? so this is the composition of saliva so on the overall what are all the functions mediated by the saliva based upon the organic solids it is doing the digestive function and because of the presence of immunoglobulin it is doing the protective function and this saliva it is also cleaning our teeth if there is no saliva the food particles after the food enters from mouth into the pharynx the food particles everything is been cleaned by the saliva so it is also involved in the cleaning function and it is the one which is taking part a major role in converting the bolus formation and if there is no saliva what happens to your mouth what happens to the lips very dry is it the good symptom getting dryness no that is the time where more and more of organisms enters and it starts doing its function happily but this saliva is helping us to moisten the mouth and the oral cavity and this saliva because of the inorganic substances which is present in the saliva it is also involved in maintaining the ph okay and finally it is also involved in the regulation of body temperature okay so these are all some important functions of the saliva okay clear so next now we will move on to the regulation of saliva so in the digestive system we are going to see each and every organ stomach duodenum intestine okay and everything is going to have the regulation based upon three concepts based upon three concepts we are going to see the regulation regulation of salivary secretion so it is going to happen in three phases the first one is oral phase gastric phase intestinal phase okay so in this three phases we are going to talk about the regulation of gi system so when you are talking about stomach in the stomach also we have the three phases of regulation 
when you are talking about small intestinal secretion there also you are going to talk in relation with this three phases so this indicates where the food is present so that is going to determine the amount of that specific organal secretions okay clear so now we are talking about saliva it is in the mouth so in the oral phase you will have maximum salivary secretion the presence of food in the mouth which makes the signal to be transferred by the sensory system and it gives signal to the salivary glands to secrete and release more and more of saliva after the food moved from mouth into the stomach will you still have that enormous amount of salivary secretion will you have that enormous amount once when the food is in your mouth when you are chewing you will have salivary secretion in excess rather than now because now there is no food in your mouth but if you chew the chewing gum if you have chocolate you have salivary secretion because the food is in your mouth so during oral phase there will be maximum salivary secretion that is due to the contact of food particles into the receptors in the mouth so that is giving the signal that food is in the mouth so saliva should be secreted in order to prevent choking so if you are swallowing without chewing what will happen you feel some sensation that something is blocking my esophagus something is stuck by mistake sometimes i think everyone would have experienced swallowing chocolates yes or no for a mean period of time until it gets dissolved you will have that difficulty okay so if there is no salivary secretion for the food which is present in the mouth to the required level you will feel the disturbed sensation okay if it is going into the trachea instead of esophagus what happens what is the next thing which will happen choking okay so foreign body entering into the trachea it arrest the breathing okay so the maximum salivary secretion will be present in the oral phase in when there is a food in your stomach that is you are terming as gastric phase gastric it is determining the stomach intestinal phase it is going to determine the duodenum small intestine okay so once when the food enters into your stomach will you have the salivary secretion will you still have the salivary secretion yes but not to the required maximum level but still you have the salivary secretion okay but it is of low concentration always salivary secretion will be there but the concentration amount of saliva which is secreted that is being changing same thing with the intestinal phase now there is no food in your stomach there is no food in your mouth but still saliva is secreted yes or no it is secreted that is your calling as basal secretion of saliva basal salivary secretion when the saliva which is secreted during the oral phase that is your calling as active salivary secretion that is happening because of the presence of food in the mouth okay clear yeah. and during intestinal phase also you have salivary secretion but it is of low concentration okay and in relation with the regulation you have two another concept that is called as conditioned reflex and and conditioned reflex so what is meant by conditioned reflex is now i am going to stimulate your salivary secretion without giving any food particle into your mouth i am going to bring the maximum salivary secretion now immediately just think of a pickle 
think about the smell of biryani is there a salivary secretion getting excess yes so that is called as conditioned salivary reflex you have already experienced the taste of a pickle so that memory is now coming to your nervous system and stimulating the salivary glands and the biryani the smell of a biryani and tamarind pickle so all these are the i'm just telling you the name of the food your ears is the one which is hearing the name of the food and when you just cross around the road you are crossing a biryani shop you will get the smell of a biryani immediately within 5 10 minutes you feel hungry because the gastric secretion salivary secretion is stimulating your secretions of the gid so that is giving you the sense of hunger and that is why usually our elders will say don't keep somebody in front of you and eat without giving them the food because when you are eating they will get the smell of a food and they will also feel hungry but they feel shy to ask give me some food even our friends just give them something when you are eating if somebody is in front of you or else they will keep on cursing you see they are eating without giving me anything ha huh? okay clear so that is called as conditioned the salivary reflex here the impulses the thinking the thought of a smell vision visual stimulus and the smell receptors the sight of a smell the sight of vision of the food smell of the food or if you are talking about the food thought of the food it is stimulating your cortical centers and it is bringing the maximum salivary secretion okay so that is called as conditioned salivary reflex and the other concept is unconditioned salivary reflex until i say the name of biryani pickle everything you have not thought about it but in the morning breakfast even though if you are not feeling hungry once when the food enters into your mouth salivary secretion is happening so it is without any condition the, uh, that is called as unconditioned salivary reflex that is the presence of food in the mouth so this is the one which is stimulating the salivary secretions okay and all these salivary secretions is happening the cortical center is getting the stimulus from the sensory nerves the nerve mainly involved or what is the seventh cranial nerve facial and then ninth one is tenth cranial nerve so these are the major nerves which is carrying the signal to the salivary glands to release the maximum of salivary juice clear clear with this yes and now we will see just the terminologies in relation with the abnormal secretions of saliva so first we will see the hyposalivation the conditions where you will have hyposalivation for example you are having fever then you will feel dryness in your mouth you will have the crack in your lips because there is hyposalivation when during fever and if you are having some emotional disturbance like fear when you are going to sit in the mca exam morning even though if you drank plenty of water you will have the dryness in your mouth once when you come out of the exam hall because of the fear anxious emotional stimulus it decreases the salivary secretion and during dehydration okay so these are the common conditions where you will experience the hyposalivation and they are all just for a few period of time like physiological changes but there is a pathological condition which causes 
permanent hyposalivation that is during serostomia and then during cyanolithiasis and bell's palsy what is bell's palsy which nerve is commonly affected facial nerve and why this bell's palsy facial nerve is causing the damage to the salivary secretion why it is causing the disturbance because the parotid gland above the parotid gland only the facial nerve is crossing and it is giving its five divisions okay the facial nerve is crossing over the parotid gland but it is not supplying the parotid gland but once when the facial nerve is disturbed when there is any irritation or disturbance in the facial nerve since it is present over the parotid gland you have the parotid gland disturbance in the secretion okay clear so that is why those who are having bell's palsy for that period moment of time when they experience the symptoms some will have drooling of saliva from their mouth okay clear so that is the reason why all these things are happening and there is another condition which causes hyper secretion that is called as paralytic secretion this is also due to the excessive stimulation of the nerve supply to the salivary gland the cause may be of anything it may be of any neural damage or any other damage which increases the impulse reaching to the salivary gland you will experience paralytic secretion we cannot determine and tell this is the only paralytic condition which causes excessive secretion the cause may be of anything so that is hypo and hyper salivation so next up to this the saliva is over 